Welcome back to the Fast Money Halftime Report. Let's hit our chart of the day here. And uh, it is a chart of housing starts plunging off a cliff, 22% decline, the steepest since 1984. Peter Schiff of Europe Pacific Capital is the author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. He has been warning us about this. He is on the fast line. Peter, uh, you can look at this glass half full, glass half empty, but, you know, they're building less, less inventory. That could be good for housing prices. Well, you know, the fact that builders are finally slowing up on their building is a good good thing. I mean, they're trying to introduce more supply into an oversupplied market. One of the reasons that builders keep building is the government keeps subsidizing the housing industry and is, is diverting resources and creating artificial demand. But ultimately, prices have to fall. They're still much too high. And I think anybody who is clinging to the hope that real estate market has bottomed uh, really should rethink those assumptions based on numbers like this because the build Builders are seeing that they can't move their inventory, that there's a lot of supply on the market, there are a lot of foreclosures on the market. And even though real estate prices are falling, the cost of buy owning a home is rising. Utility costs are going up, maintenance, taxes, mortgage right. rates are now starting to rise. Peter, so with all Peter, these other I'm factors, sorry. Peter, I'm sorry. the only I thing break they can give here. is the price. Peter. I'm sorry, we have some breaking news here. We have some clarification from an EU media spokesperson clarifying some of those comments made earlier by that EU official uh, regarding essentially that the situation was out of control. Uh, they are now saying that the EU official was simply expressing uh, of the fear of a catastrophe, not that one was coming. So they're sort of backpedaling on this. That he was expressing the fear of a catastrophe, not saying that one was in fact going to come in the next few hours. Little market reaction so far. We'll continue monitoring this in terms of market reaction. But Peter, sorry to interrupt you. We were talking about housing, but let's switch gears here a little bit because we are in a mess of a market right now. We just had some of these comments that were moving the markets earlier today. Where are we right now and specifically for the gold trade? Because that's one that you've been advocating. Technically, it looks like it might be breaking down. You're still long, I'm assuming. Not from my perspective. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm glad to hear some of the fast money people uh, being negative on gold, so that uh, gives me a little bit more uh, optimism. But, you know, especially on the dollar, too. You, you know, the dollar is at a record low today against the Swiss franc. It's not mm -hmm. just dropping against the yen. It's at an all-time record low against the Swiss franc. And, yeah, the, fa the dollar is marginally higher against the euro today, but, I mean, it's down against most currencies. And, in fact, you've had tremendous uh, worldwide, uh, you know, political upheaval, uh, not only just in Japan, but we've had in the Middle East, and you see no flight to quality rally in the dollar. This is one of the first times that that's happened, and I think people are starting to perceive that there is no quality in the dollar, and rather than, than, than fleeing to the dollar, they're going to flee from the dollar, and I think this is something that uh, bears watching, especially with it, you know, breaking down technically here uh, with the dollar against a couple of key currencies, and, you know, I believe you're going to see bigger rallies in other currencies. And yes, I think what's happening right now is bullish for gold, it's bullish for silver, and it's bullish for other commodities. They, they pulled back. I mean, you had a huge run. Uh, you had record highs in a lot of commodity prices. Certainly, uh, there's some profit taking. Certainly, there's uh, some a lot of leveraged players out there that wanted to deleverage. Uh, you know, they, they, they have, they're exposed. Uh, but I think the fundamental buyers are going to come back and they're going to drive, I think, commodity prices, precious metals prices to new highs and the dollar to new lows. Hey, Peter, right. back to the housing just for a moment now you talked about that in the foreclosure issue and all the rest of it so what best trade do you advocate going forward based upon this? Is it the financials? Is that where you'd go as far as on the short side? Or where are you looking well, for Well, I mean, look, you certainly don't want to buy the financials. I haven't been in the financials in years. You don't want to buy anything related to real estate. You don't want to buy home builders. You don't want to buy retailers. You don't want to buy financial services. You don't want to buy banks. Uh, there are a lot of companies that you want to avoid if you want to short them, if that's your thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's certainly uh, a lot of shorting opportunities there. Uh, so it's mainly what, what not to own and what to avoid. And if you're better uh, the, the U.S. recovery story on a recovery in housing, right. you, you got to rethink that bet. Housing is not going to recover. It's going to fall for years. And eventually, real estate prices will start to rise nominally. But they're, but in real terms, they're going to fall even faster because they're, it's, real estate prices will not keep pace with inflation. Okay, got it, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Peter Schiff of Euro-Pacific Capital. Got to take a break here. More halftime reports straight ahead.